My name is Jason Garcia, and I have the unfortunate pleasure to identify as a survivor of sexual assault and domestic abuse. I will warn you that some parts of this conversation will be a bit heavy, and I very much encourage you to take whatever it is that you need to do to take care of yourself and to ensure that you do everything that you need to do to hold that, those that you love near and dear to you. So you came to this talk probably to learn about how to support survivors of sexual assault. We're definitely going to talk about that, and I'm more than happy to provide the platform to do so. At the same time, I can't do that message justice without telling you about this very important truth that I need you to accept today. With that, when you support a survivor, you need to let them be the experts of their own healing journey. Now, when I say survivors are experts, I believe you probably wouldn't disregard this truth, especially when we think about some really incredible movements out there. Who's ever heard of the hashtag MeToo movement? Time's up. Why I stayed. Why he beat me. When I was raped. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You probably wouldn't question that the creators of such movements, people like the incredible Miss Tarana Burke, Terry Crews, or even quite possibly Anita Hill in being authoritative voices in this truth. The same level of respect and authority that you give to those people, those really incredible, knowledgeable people, I need you to give to survivors when they're at their most vulnerable, when they seem like they're at their most weak, but in fact, they can be at their most resilient. When a survivor may disclose an experience of sexual assault or abuse, or when they've already done so, but they're in a moment that triggers them, they may choose to come out and disclose that to you. When that happens, I need you to listen. And I mean really listen to them. Let survivors tell you their story in their own words. Let them describe it the way that they see it. Let them have the power of attaching the label that they see to best fit their experience of harm. Even if you may not agree with that label, or you may have opinions about it, it's not about you. It's about them coming to terms with the experience of violence that they've unfortunately gone through and are trying to process what had just happened to them. So give them that patience, even if you really want them to learn about this really cool thing like consent or the legal cases of consent and when they're present in Canada. Just hold off. Maybe they just need to vocalize the fact that something negative happened to them even in the first place. It takes incredible courage and patience and a tumultuous process of one's own mind games in order for a survivor to come and feel comfortable enough to disclose their experience of harm. So be authentically engaged with them. They took the time to see you as a trustworthy and supportive person, so give them that opportunity too. Empathy scholar Brene Brown describes empathy as feeling with people. Rarely is it ever a response that someone does or says that makes a connection feel better. It's the connection itself, that space that you share with someone else, that makes something feel better. So find power in that connection and strive to be genuinely present in that moment with them. I can't emphasize enough that you are not there to be the role of the police. You're not there to be the judge. You're not there as a medical examiner. So don't act like it. Those questions can be reserved for those experts, and those experts can take off their hats the moment that they become a supporter to someone that they know and love. Let survivors tell their stories. Let them tell their truths as full or as incomplete as they need to. 
They might be digging deep and hard in order to find that truth. So give them the opportunity and patience to do so. Your moment there is to help guide them through it, not to find out which experience was the right experience. It's them who went through that experience after all. If you're looking for some helpful key messages so you don't end up being like the nosy reporter or the nosy policeman, tell survivors you believe them. You can say the words, I am so sorry that happened to you, I believe you. Rarely is it ever the fact that survivors lie about their experiences. More often than not, survivors are terrified of being blamed and shamed as well as not believed for their experience of harm. You have to think, why would someone even choose to lie about that? Tell them it's not their fault. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. I hope you know what happened to you was not your fault. It never was your fault, nor is it ever going to be your fault. Survivors are never at fault for being sexually assaulted or abused, no matter what they were wearing, what they were saying, how much or how little they were drinking, or who they chose to go out with. We need survivors to know that and to feel supported in those truths. You can validate and normalize how a survivor is feeling. Various types of feelings come up through processing experiences of trauma. So help a survivor take the time to process those feelings. Let them know you're there to help them in that process. You can say something like, your feelings are valid. It's totally okay to not be okay. You feel what's right for you. When I was raped nearly a year ago, at a very strong and resilient time of where I had already been telling other survivors how to heal, telling them those important words, I believe you, it's not your fault. The pain and shock that I was in, the distress of that moment, didn't give me the strength and empowerment I needed in order to hear myself. It took some incredible people in my life that I reached out to, to tell me that they believed me, to tell me I was going to be okay, to let me know that I wasn't at fault, even though I kept telling myself it was, even though a month before that, the hour before that, the minute before that happened, I knew that wasn't the case. Lowell, thank you so much for being the first person to pick up the phone. Ashley, thank you for being my support person at the hospital when I went to see that SART nurse. Lynn and Kristen, thank you for letting me cry on your shoulders at the times that I needed to most, from immediately after that experience up to as recent as even the night before. Supporters are incredible, but what they helped me realize was that my healing journey was very much up to me, and as much as my recovery next steps were what they were, They'll look so different to different survivors out there. In fact, it's okay. Different people will see different aspects of their healing and their recovery as important to them. So let go of any assumptions that you might have as to what survivors should do. Given that sexual assault often takes power and autonomy and control away from survivors, it's so important that you do your best to let them know that the power is in their hands to heal. They are the capable masters of their journey. They know what's right for them. They know their bodies. They know their minds. They know their experiences and their feelings. Your role as a supporter is to just help them identify that. And when you're helping them find different options, provide them as options whether it's accessing supports at your local sexual assault center, seeing a sexual assault trauma nurse, reporting to the police, or doing nothing at all. Survivors have the right to choose what their next steps are. And in fact, just listening and supporting might be everything the survivor needs in their healing journey right there in that moment. They may choose 
to disclose more to a different support person. It doesn't mean you are good enough. It means that you help them carry their journey on to another person that can help tell them the same thing. Different people have different relationships with different parts of support. So let them have those relationships. Support a survivor in their decisions to report, to not report, to abort, to parent, to seize the day, or to lay in bed aimlessly. They have the right to that, don't you think? Healing looks very different for everyone, and it is absolutely possible. My own personal healing journey doesn't exist without the consideration of different aspects of my identity, such as my queerness, my fatness, my own place in the new Latino diaspora as a settler on Treaty 6 territories. Many of these aspects of my identities either work systemically or individually speaking against me to silence me or to paint me as the burden that wasn't dealt with in historical times of colonization. Despite the pain brought on to me by my rapist as well as my ancestral colonizers, I'm still here. I am still here. I am that witch that didn't burn. And whether for survival or for thrival, let me be here as I choose to be. Let me be and heal as I choose to. Communities and individuals who experience harm are agents in restoring their own well-being. Everyone's survivor healing journeys are so unique and complex to each individual and or community. Healing is not linear, but people can indeed heal. As Africana scholar and activist Sean Jenright shares, if we want to allow survivors of violence to heal from their traumas, this requires a healing-centered approach. When we engage in a healing-centered approach, we ask not what's wrong with you, rather instead we ask what is right with you? How can you heal from this? How can you move on? How can you find your power? When survivors are engaged in a healing-centered approach that allows them to be believed, listened to, and empowered as the experts of their own healing journey, they can accomplish so much. And although the support you provide them can bring for tremendous positive impact, survivors aren't your charity case. Your support shouldn't be contingent on being their hero. Survivors can be their own damn heroes, so let them be it. I just want to say as a message to survivors in the audience here or digitally, thank you for giving me this opportunity and for inviting me so kindly into this movement and sharing these words. I'm nothing without the collective resilience and power of the movement. To anyone in the audience impacted by violence, please know that your existence is resistance. I have no idea what it took for you or your ancestors to be here, but I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so proud of you for doing what you needed to do in order to be here. You know what's best for you. You will be and always have been your own damn best hero. Oh, and your power, know it. I believe you and I believe in you. Thank you. <laughs>